All right, Badgers, it's Coach Jamie here to talk about breakout tips for centers. So the key concept here is slow and low, meaning we're going to work slowly and methodically, and we're going to stay low to the net. So the first thing to remember is our center is our third defenseman. So we have, uh, in this case, uh, red is on defense. We're trying to break out of our zone. And black is on offense, trying to keep the puck in. So we've got a right defenseman that's left to go to the corner to pursue a puck for the breakout. While we still have uh, the, the opposing team's left wing is, is chasing him for pressuring. But we still have the offensive center and right wing in front of the net. So we have our lefty covering the right wing. So our center has to stay with their center and cover the house. Number one, cover the house. So our center has to stay low to cover the house until we get possession of the puck. So when our defenseman gets possession of the puck, the first thing our center wants to do is take a mental snapshot, mental picture of where everybody is on the ice. So he has all the information in his brain of where everybody is before anything happens. In this case, he's waiting for this defenseman to get possession and make a pass up to this winger. As soon as he sees this defenseman get possession and start to make that pass, he should already be communicating with the winger that he's available, that he's going to be open so that winger can know where he's at. Even if he can't, the winger can't look up to see him, if he can hear his voice, he can echolocate like bats do to figure out where that center is at. So they should already be communicating. But the center is going to try to time his swing here. So when that pass is coming to this winger, he's already calling for it, and he's going to skate a little bit of a low loop come towards that winger and start heading for this gap between the defenseman. If he skates straight up, he's going to run into this D-man if he gets the pass. So we want to kind of come to the winger, make it a little bit easier, closer pass, and we want to try to shoot that gap. As soon as this winger gets the puck, he should be taking like one or two strides away from the boards and should be immediately looking to make that pass up to that center and spring that center. Uh, ideally, in this case, this winger is also timing, and he's going to swing as well. We should be able to, as soon as this center beats that defenseman, this winger is already on his way. We should be able to send a pass. It's going to go off my screen here, but we should be able to send a pass to this winger, and we're heading up ice. We're already through the neutral zone, most likely. Uh, if not, the center can skate it for a little bit and then probably dish wide to that winger. That winger is going to go wide. The center is going to crash the net. This winger will be the one coming behind because he's the farthest behind the play. He's going to be third man high. And we'll have our attack triangle. One of the problems that we run into here is this center being disciplined enough to stay low. If he goes whenever this defenseman gets the puck, he's going to be going way too early. So as soon as the defenseman gets the puck, the center starts skating. He's going to be all the way at the blue line by the time this pass is made. It's going to be too far of a pass, plus most likely the defenseman is going to pinch over and get him. Uh, so we bleed out too far. The worst thing you do is even be behind the defenseman because um, then we're being outnumbered in our zone, and it's going to be really hard to make that pass. So that's where we come back to the concept of slow and low. So if that play is taking too long to develop, maybe this defenseman bobbles the puck in the corner or the left wing gets a little bit extra pressure on him. The center is going to, maybe he was he was coming to go. Well, now that didn't materialize as fast as he could, he's going to circle back. And he's just going to keep cycling down here until time as this defenseman gets the puck up to that winger. And once again, we can time it. And then we go and we hit that pass. Definitely don't want to get too far ahead. It's going to be too hard to make that pass. Um, once again, that center should be communicating the entire time. It should be communicating to the winger uh, where he's at so that we know. Um, and that's pretty much the basics of it for the center is, you know, number one is we don't want to leave, let up a goal. So he's going to cover the house and he's going to stay slow and low until it's time to break out. He's going to call, communicate, call for that puck. We're going to get that pass. He's going to shoot this gap between the defenseman and we're out of our zone. So the defenseman or the uh, center actually has a pretty easy job there. Stay st slow and low and cover the house. And uh, that's smart hockey. And that's what we, we want you guys to do.